Patricia from YoungFinances.com and today it's time for another Finance Fundamental where we talk about the building blocks of finance. How can I start investing? Well, <laughs> to get you started, the first thing that you want to do is think about your personal situation. So everyone is different and these are some tips that I'm going to give you to really kind of hone in on what your personal situation is and what your personal preferences are. Number one, are you thinking about investing as a way to get rich quick? If so, step away from the stock. You don't want to put all of your money in the stock market only to end up losing it all and on the street begging for food. Please, sir, may I have some porridge? It's awfully cold out here. Nas ondas verdes do mar É doce morrer no mar But if you realize that investing is a systematic way to build wealth and you're ready to get started, then here are some tips for you. There are two ways to invest. You can invest on your own or you can hire someone to do it for you. If you invest on your own, you're going to want to have plenty of time. You need the time to research individual stocks, keep up with what's going on with them, uh, read the earnings reports, and keep up with press releases for each stock in your portfolio. Now, if you've got one stock in your portfolio, that might not be that hard. But if you want to diversify and make sure you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket or your entire retirement fund in one stock, you're probably gonna want more than one stock. You may even want 15, 20, 30, 50. Who knows? Do you really have the time to research and keep up with 50 stocks? I know I don't. But if you do have the time and you're willing to put that time in, I would recommend that you get one book and this book is called The Intelligent Investor. This is a great book. Benjamin Graham is considered the grandfather of investing. Uh, Warren Buffett says this is the best book on investing ever written and Warren Buffett is a great investor. If you want to do that, there are basics, how to get started, uh, what you should be looking at, inflation, information, um, earnings per share. There's a ton in this book. It's kind of like the Bible on investing. So I'd recommend this if you do want to start your own portfolio by choosing your own stocks. But if you're like the rest of us and you do not have time to do this investing thing, then you want to hire someone to do it for you. A couple of different ways to do this. You can hire a mutual fund manager to invest for you. Basically what they do is when you put your money in with this mutual fund manager, there are several different funds that you can choose and those funds are managed by that mutual fund manager. So they do all the trading, they do all the research, they figure out what should go in there. All you do is give them your money, okay? There are two types of mutual funds. There are active funds and there are passive funds. The active funds are where the manager is specifically trying to beat a base level or a benchmark. Uh, bench, another name for a benchmark is an index. So an example of an index is the S&P 500, there's the MSCI All Country World Index, there's the Russell 3000, those are examples of indices. And when the manager is trying to beat the index, they are actively trading and making decisions and choices in order to beat that benchmark. That's an active fund. For a passive fund, on the other hand, also called an index fund, the manager is not trying to beat the index, they're trying to be the index. 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 They're trying to be the index. So you're going to get the same ups and downs that you would if you were in that index. And you, you cannot invest directly in an index, but these index funds will mimic the index. So if the S&P 500 is up 10%, your fund will be up 10%. If the S&P 500 is down 10%, your fund will be down 10% if they're matching the index the way they're supposed to. Now, typically mutual funds require that you have about $1,000 to get started and that will get you one fund. 
So if you have a little bit less to get started, maybe you were like me and you wanted to get started with $25 or $250, you can do that with ETFs. And ETFs are also managed accounts, similar to mutual funds, but in the case of an ETF, uh, they're traded throughout the day. They're usually lower prices in order to get in. And I've got a video comparing and contrasting mutual funds versus ETFs, which I recommend that you watch if you're not sure what the heck I'm talking about. But a great way to get started with ETFs is a managed ETF portfolio. I use a managed ETF portfolio for my Roth IRA as well as a personal account. And I send my money to the manager. They choose uh, six or seven ETFs and they disperse the money, they do the trading, everything comes in, I don't have to worry about it at all. And I've got a link below on this manager if you want to take, take a look at them. I've got a review up at youngfinances.com that you can look at and see if you, if you like them and you wanna get started. So that is how I recommend you get started investing. Decide if you wanna do it on your own or decide if you wanna hire someone to do it for you. Do you have further questions on the basics of finance? Be sure to send them to me at youngfinances.com. I'm always happy to hear and answer questions from you guys. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. You can go over to youngfinances.com to sign up. And I've got a private website that I have just for my newsletter subscribers. And I have information there that I don't share on the regular site. So make sure you're there. Oh, I can do this again. Please, will you sign up and subscribe to my YouTube channel? Um, I'm very excited to be making new videos and I'd love to see you guys here. Um, make sure you subscribe. I'll have a button here somewhere where you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I have some sharing buttons below and I appreciate being here. I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.